Uh, I'm Dr. Steve Irwin, Vice President for Student Life, and I'm pleased to welcome you here for the second of our uh, weekly updates. Um, my team includes folks from the Bryant Student Health Center, uh, University Housing, and campus activities, all areas that are uh, immersed in uh, managing and, and responding to the issues we face. Um, student Life is also trying to manage a process whereby students report uh, the need for class absence and uh, informing faculty members of that and also trying to inform faculty members when students are eligible to return to class. So uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, you know, I want to remind everybody that we're, as a university, we're following some different metrics uh, so we know how our operations are going. We certainly monitor public health restrictions and, and our collaboration with uh, Crawford County Health is, is a huge part of that. Uh, we're looking at regional infection rates and our ability to respond to those as a region and also just what the status of other universities are in the area and region, what K-12 is doing. And, and what other partners are doing in the community. Again, we're here for that weekly update on the status of COVID-19 among the student population. I'm glad to be uh, joined by Dr. Tim Stebbins from Crawford County as the public health officer and other members of the PSU team and Crawford County team that are, are working to manage this together. Um, you know, in addition to talking about our numbers today, we want to talk maybe a little bit about the complexity of those numbers and, and focus on that a little bit. And I'll have some things about that, and I'm sure Dr. Stebbins will as well. But I thought I might just jump in by telling you about PSU numbers. Uh, you'll recall since August 17th, the Bryant Student Health Center has tested 193, and we've had 96 positives. Uh, within that number in the last week, August 26th through September 2nd, we've tested 154 and have 81 positives. So about three quarters of our activity in terms of testing at that facility has happened uh, in the last week in total. Uh, obviously, the numbers have grown quickly, and that was something that we expected, uh, particularly given some of the information that we discussed at last week's event. Uh, PSU since then has taken steps on campus to reduce gatherings and to respond in other ways and particularly to urge students to follow the mask and social distancing standards when not on campus. Uh, and we hope to see improvements as we look into next week and the numbers that we're uh, dealing with this week into next. Uh, I made reference to the complexity of the numbers and how complex those are and sometimes how hard they are to get. Uh, some of that is simply because the nature of a university. Uh, some is because of the location that we're located in geographically. And then also the demographics of our student body. Um, we can accurately report the numbers tested at the Bryan Student Health Center, of course. Um, the county has excellent testing capabilities and capacity, so uh, a lot of our students will seek testing uh, from other facilities within the county. Um, students get tested at a lot of places, including distance, uh, places at distance outside the county, and so that adds to the complexity. Uh, students with residency outside the county, their numbers are often counted there and, and not counted in Crawford County, so everything gets a, a bit fuzzy and a bit confusing and takes a lot of manpower and a lot of effort uh, to work through to get at those numbers. The Bryant Student Health Center is focused on testing, getting positive tests into isolation, identifying the close contacts of those positives, and getting them into quarantine, and then monitoring uh, those folks, particularly the positives, as they work through their period of isolation or quarantine. Uh, we're particularly focused on residence halls and Greek chapter houses, those, Greek, those group living conditions that we have responsibility for. As a university, uh, we continue to focus on uh, urging students to uh, exhibit proper behavior both on and off campus. And certainly on campus hasn't been a challenge at all. Students have responded tremendously. And by and large, off campus, they've responded as well. Uh, but we know we have some exceptions. Uh, we're really encouraging students not to be close contacts because that are the, those are the big numbers that are getting caught up into this process. We encourage them, if you feel ill, certainly don't have contact with anyone, seek medical advice immediately, and then we're focused on managing the process of quarantine and isolation from those students and, and keeping them away from campus and away from others. 
Uh, all of this is designed to uh, stem the spread. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Stebbins to uh, give a broader update from the county, and then some of us can stand for questions. Uh, thank you. I want to thank uh, Dr. Irwin and Dr. Scott and the university staff for their commitment to mitigation and safety of the students, the staff, and the community overall. I especially want to uh, thank the Bryant Student Health Center for their partnership uh, and excellent and diligent work uh, in managing this epidemic. We have a great partnership with their healthcare organization, and that's important for us to manage this in this setting and in our community. I also want to thank our health department and our medical community for their diligent work in managing and mitigating this disease, including testing, uh, as well as the care of the ill. So the current situation in Crawford County, as of this morning, we have 349 active cases uh, in isolation. We have greater than 1,000 in quarantine. Uh, those are the primary contacts. That's an increase from 100 in isolation at this time last week and 400 in quarantine last week. We've quadrupled our numbers in seven days. 86% of the cases currently uh, in isolation are in the 18 to 25 year old age group, age group. Although cases are noted throughout the community uh, as well as throughout uh, the businesses and encompass all age ranges. We already have at least 30 more positives as of this morning. Uh, that will be added to the numbers tomorrow. The state total for us currently since inception is 686 cases. That's up 87 from Monday. I do want to address the numbers because it is a moving target and it's somewhat challenging both to understand and also represent. The isolation numbers we feel very strongly about. Uh, we have a good handle on what those numbers are. We know who the positives are that have been tested in our community, uh, both in the community and at PSU. The quarantine numbers are a little bit more challenging as we are doing the case tracing, contact tracing. Uh, just so you understand, these numbers are large and take a lot of manpower to manage, both in our systems at the health department and at PSU, as well as the state. And because of that, uh, those numbers change quite a bit. And that's okay. That's what I want to say. That's okay. The quarantine numbers represent what should be managed, um, or the quarantine numbers are what were, are the, what we're managing appropriately in that those that have been primary contacts, we want to set them aside to prevent uh, further spread of the disease. We're monitoring them for 14 days. If they have no illness, they're off quarantine and that's great. So those numbers are what they are and that's the effective number. The isolation number much more important. We need to know if we have somebody actively involved in the disease process isolate them to present, prevent spread. And I think our community is doing a good job at that overall. We have initiated several measures countywide to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19, including the health order that we issued last Friday. Uh, we continue to look at the, the daily case rate and continue to evaluate appropriate mitigation measures. That includes reevaluating our health order ongoing each day. We will have a revision on Friday, which will adjust the restrictions. Mostly that's related to the time um, of closing for the bars, as that didn't seem to be a great mitigating factor. But the seated to serve that we have in the order will stay, and that is, we believe, an appropriate mitigation factor and has been very helpful. Uh, we will also define further restrictions as related to event centers and require mitigation plans for high volume public gatherings. The health department continues to work with the university and all of our school systems to help provide a safe and effective learning environment. Uh, the K through 12 schools are doing quite well and we're monitoring and working with the schools daily for case count and quarantines. 
Of note, we have not seen one case of COVID spread within the school system from a positive case. And so that, that's an important note in that it shows that the mitigation standards and plans that we have in place are effective and are working. We do have a few cases and we do have several students on quarantine. Again, quarantine is appropriate for the, the, the contacts. But the important thing to note is we are not having intra-school spread. Um, we do ask a few things from the public. Uh, we need the public's assistance to help us through this and help each other. The main thing that we're asking for is continued personal responsibility and mitigation. And that involves avoiding high risk activities and areas, making smart decisions about what you're gonna do and when you're gonna do it. Wear a mask whenever social distancing cannot be maintained outside and always inside, except for when eating, drinking, or uh, performing vigorous exercise. Please use your hand sanitizer often, any, especially after any contact. Avoid touching your face, including your mouth, eyes, or nose. If you are sick, please stay at home. Please follow the isolation and quarantine orders. And if you're symptomatic, please seek testing so that we can identify you and case trace to identify contacts so we can minimize or prevent further spread. The County Health Department staff, as well as the medical community, remain ready and willing to help. We are doing well in the medical community. Currently, the hospitals are not overwhelmed. Staffing is appropriate and our overall impact on the medical community is low at this time, which is good. We don't want that to get into a high spot because that will create further problems for our community overall. So again, we ask the public's help, help in helping us through this process. Uh, please be involved and use your personal responsibility to help uh, mitigate and prevent further spread of this disease. And that's all I have, unless there's questions. You have questions. So every case that is tested, we ask um, if they're in school and what schools and where they work so we can trace back to those locations uh, to help us mitigate further there. Okay. Um, and then the second question is, what has been the response by businesses since the health order on Friday, uh, specifically with bars and restaurants? Sure. So uh, obviously uh, no business likes restrictions, uh, but by and large, uh, all businesses have followed the order. Uh, we worked with them last Friday afternoon uh, to discuss uh, the new restrictions. They asked questions, we answered. Uh, overall, they have followed those and we've had no problems, which has been outstanding for our community. Well, we would go back to our overall metrics that I listed earlier and look at those in totality. Uh, there's a lot of steps between where we are and, and, and shifts to anywhere near closing, and we'd just be evaluating the totality of those circumstances, obviously in consultation with Dr. Bean, or Dr. Bean and Dr. Stebbins, uh, but really looking at a whole range of factors. Sure. Well, you know, first of all, what happened last spring would be uh, obviously an indicator of what would happen if we moved to that kind of situation again. Uh, there are also other scenarios by which uh, modes of instruction would change, but not necessarily students' presence here would change. 
And I have one thing that I'd like to add, if I, if I might. Uh, we have a holiday weekend coming up. Uh, there's a question about students traveling and going home. From the health officers and health department side, we ask that they do not travel home. Uh, we, we know what we have here. It's here. We don't want to spread that to their home communities, and so we would prefer that they did not travel, that they stayed here um, throughout, throughout that holiday weekend, also doing the personally responsible right thing. There is no doubt this is the most difficult thing we've ever seen, anybody's ever seen, to plan for. And uh, we've had some groups working on worst case scenarios. And, and believe it or not, some days it feels like that's what we deal with every single day because we're making decisions that might have three or four options for us to, or three or four paths for us to go. None of those are very pleasant for us in terms of what we really want to do and the experience that we really want to offer to our students. So, uh, so we are, you know, we are thinking day to day. We're also, this morning, had a lengthy conversation about commencement. We had a lengthy conversation this morning about spring. What does the spring semester look like? What will we be able to do next spring? Uh, talk about athletics. What will they be able to do? So we have, I wouldn't say we have contingency plans. I think Dr. Irwin said got it so right, and that is we've got these metrics we're following and tracking. We do believe our students would be better off here than scattered. And uh, we've also decided that we don't think that we need to be thinking about a binary decision, that we're either open or we're closed. We're either open and operating face-to-face -face or we're all fully online. There could be a whole bunch of different strategies across the spectrum that we could implement that wouldn't cause us to jump to online. I think the, the basis of your question goes back to what the University of North Carolina did or what uh, Notre Dame did and where they just, they moved in that direction, they moved very quickly. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci this morning said, it's not a good idea to send college students out when you have outbreaks on your campus or in your community, you're just gonna further spread the virus. So, uh, so I think we've got a, as opposed to March, I think we have a very nuanced approach to this and a very thoughtful approach. And uh, even though we talk about not setting precedent you know, we've got to have give in our policies and the way we approach things. Uh, and I think that's really incredible. This is a COVID year. Things will be different. And our decisions will look different from decisions we've ever made in the past. But I will commit that our number one concern and priority will be the safety and wellness of our faculty, staff, and students. We want to make sure our students can continue to make progress in their degree programs. That's, that's one of the three things we keep focused on. And that third thing is what we're doing today, and is to make sure that we are transparent, we are communicating, and if somebody says to me someday, I'm getting tired of reading the daily updates, that'd probably be a good thing, because they just see us regularly communicating with them, sharing with them, showing them what the numbers are, and then asking them, as Dr. Stebbins did and Dr. Irwin said, ask, asking them to participate in this, to be engaged, to be helpful, because every single person on our campus can make a difference as to whether we do what you just asked about, go fully online or not. So Labor Day is a, it's an important weekend. A lot of times people want to get together with their families, but this would be a very good weekend to forego it. Stay here on the campus and let's stay safe and let's stay together would be my message.